um, Dr. Janardhan Rao. Um, in the previous lessons, we had discussed about uh, uh, memory, memory management and, uh, and the swapping also. We will see uh, in detail about this uh, what is a continuous memory location and uh, swapping, unlike these concepts. So, in this uh, context, uh, see, see to the phys physical address and uh, logical address. Logical and physical address space. Uh, Physical address identifies a physical location of, the, of required data in the memory. The user never directly deals with the physical address but can access by its uh, corresponding logical address. So, the corresponding log logical address will be generated by the CPU. The user program generates a logical address and thinks uh, that the program is running. The logical address uh, but the program needs physical address for its execution because um, the actual program is saved in the hard disk. So, when you are running the program, so whatever the instructions loaded in this main memory, uh, hard disk, so that will be actually the physical, physically where the instructions are saved or where the program is saved. That is your, your uh, physical hard disk. From here, the instruction will be brought to the one by one to the RAM, for, uh, from RAM to CPU. So, this is the actual physically where the data is saved. That is our physical address, physical, physically where the data is available, that is our physical address. So, from the, that you have to calculate um, by using the CPU, um, by using the logical address. The logical address will be generated by the CPU. So, then memory management unit will uh, uh, calculate it, um, the physical address, uh, then the, it goes to physical address and get the data from there. So, the logical address bus, uh, but the program needs physical, physical memory for its execution. Therefore, the logical address must be mapped to the physical address by a memory management unit before they are used. The term physical address space is used for all physical addresses corresponding to the logical addresses in a logical space. So, this is a diagram. Um, this will be generated the logical address by using the logical address and uh, it will calculate the physical address in the hard disk. So, from there only uh, the data will be um, fetched from there uh, for execution. So, that you have seen uh, logical address, physical address space. So, the logical address will be generated by the CPU and the physical address will be calculated by MMU and it, um, that is MMU means memory management unit and from there the data will be brought to the RAM, further from RAM to your uh, CPU. So, this is uh, swapping means. Swapping is a memory management scheme in which any process can be temporarily swapped from main, from main memory to secondary memory, the same way from main memory to second, secondary memory. We will brought from the uh, data from the main memory, hard, hard disk to main memory. So, in secondary memory, the space where the swap load process is stored in called swap loads, swap space. The process of swapping affects the performance of the system. It helps uh, to run long, larger and more than one, one process. So, that is what swapping also you have seen in the previous class. Uh, this is a thing uh, swapping in swapping board. So, we will get the data from the hard disk to uh, main memory at the same that is called swapping and swapping board means uh, um, we create the space for the new, in, new in process in the RAM. So, that is uh, for we will create uh, space for the uh, new processes. Uh, so, that is swapped out. The di uh, diagram shows uh, swapping out two processes where that uh, a disk is used as a backing store. In the diagram, the suppose there is a multi-programming environment with a round robin serial number terms. So, number of programs will be available in the RAM by minimizing that what we can see. So, swapping the swapping of processes by by the manager memory manager is fast enough so that uh, some process will be in the memory ready to execute when the CPU scheduler wants to reschedule the CPU. So, a variant of the in swapping the technique is a priority based scheduling algorithm already we have seen in the previous uh, session. Uh, when the process with the high priority finishes, the, then the process with low priority is back in the continuous, continuous its execution that we have seen swapping and swapping out. Uh, this is uh, the procedure by which any pro uh, process gets removed from the uh, hard disk and placed in the main memory or RAM commonly known as swapped in, uh, it is vice versa, that is swapped in, swapped out. Uh, next, uh, that this is a simple example. 
swapping uh, what is the advantage of the swapping and is it is it one of the swapping so swapping technique mainly helps the cpu to manage multiple processes in the single main memory because by minimizing uh, we can keep multiple processes in the ram so the only the desired main disadvantage the advantage disadvantage of the swapping is if the computer system loses power the user may lose all information related to the program in case of substantial swapping activity if the swapping algorithm is not good the composite method can increase the number of phase faults and decrease the overall processor performance we will see in detail in a single task operating system only one process occupies the user program of the area and uh, stays in memory until the process is complete this is a uh, that is single process in a multi tasking operating system the situation arises when all the activity processes cannot coordinate in the main memory then the process is swapped out from the main memory so that other process can enter in, enter into this one this is the main advantage of swapping so we will see what is the continuous memory allocation and uh, variable country, uh, what is continuous, uh, continuous memory allocation means suppose uh, as we have discussed in the previous class uh, this is uh, your hard disk the hard disk so the um, memory will be in the blocks uh, memory is greatest so as i explain, explained in the previous class there will be one one line you know in one line one byte of uh, data will be stored like this uh, 1000 bits one kilobyte or this uh, one kilo one kb one kb one kb like this uh, the data um, blocks will be there so in this uh, blocks uh, whichever file you want to save uh, the os will see um, the available places in the hard disk available uh, uh, space in the hard disk one kb suppose uh, if uh, one file is 1 kb so 1 kb file can be saved in one, one block and uh, suppose it is 2 uh, kb if the place is available so in that it will be uh, uh, it will be allotted or it will be saved in the continuous plots uh, continuous blocks the 2 kb file so so that is uh, um, continuous uh, allocations or continuous um, continuous so continuous memory allocation is a memory and management technique uh, where whenever there is a continuous by the process uh, for the memory then a single section of the continuous single section of the continuous blocks or memory block is given to the process according to its requirement so that's what uh, continuous or continuous memory allocation uh, we'll see the continuous uh, memory allocation is achieved just by dividing the memory into fixed fixed sizes fixed sizes so as we have seen fixed size means the memory is divided into fixed sizes so blocks 1 kb 1 kb 1 kb like this so the memory can be divided either in the fixed size the partition or variable size the partition so we will see what are advantages of the fixed size of, uh, location and uh, and uh, variable uh, size partitions so in the fixed size partition scheme um, the memory is divided the memory is divided into 1k this suppose 1 kb 1 kb 1 kb 1 kb uh, partition may or may not be the same size the size of each uh, partition is fixed uh, and as indicated by the name of the technique and it is uh, it cannot be changed in this partition scheme each partition may uh, contain exactly one process there is a problem that this technique will not will limit the degree of multi program because number of partitions will be basically um, decide the number of processes whenever any process terminates then partition becomes uh, available for another pro process suppose uh, we already loaded some processes one two like this so some suppose one process executed so in this uh, in this one that is uh, terminated so there will be place available for the um, this is a uh, empty memory a place available for the uh, another process can be accommodated there so this is we can say it is a hole this is a hole in the memory so this is a continuous memory allocation we look at this one um, 5 kb 2 kb 3 kb 3 kb this is a memory uh, we can see fixed uh, we has already partitioned Uh, 5 kb 5, uh, 5 kb memory location and 2 kb memory space 3 kb and like this suppose uh, it's important to note that these partitions are allocated to the process as they arrive and partition that is allocated to the arrived process basically depends upon the algorithm followed 
if there is some wastage in the um, partition that uh, that is called internal fragmentation suppose uh, you no know, about 5 kb slot is there suppose here uh, there is a file 3 kb and 5 kb 5 kb space this space 5 kb space and it is a 3 kb file allowed um, came for the execution so now 3 kb file now uh, for 3 kb is allotted to the 5 kb so now 2 kb is waste that is internal fragmentation that's called fragmentation means that is waste as a memory waste as a memory So, advantage of the contains memory allocation. This scheme is simple and is easy to implement. It supports uh, multi programming as multiple processes can be stored inside the main memory. Management is easy and using this scheme. So, what are the disadvantages of the contains allocation? The internal fragmentation is the main drawback of this contains memory allocation. We have got this uh, internal fragmentation we'll go for the uh, new technique that is a uh, variable size partition scheme. In variable size partition scheme, uh, there is no fixed size partitions. So this is our memory, this is our memory, and this is there is no uh, fixed size partitions. Whenever one process comes, that will be allotted here. So there is no wastage of memory. So that is the main advantage of this uh, variable partitions. And it uh, this scheme is also known as a dynamic uh, partitioning, and uh, it came into existence uh, to overcome the drawback in uh, that is internal fragmentation in the six fixed size partition. So you will see in this partitioning uh, scheme allocation is done dynamically. The size of the partition is not declared initially. So as and when the process comes or when the job comes uh, whatever size it will be in the memory available in the hard disk or RAM that will be allotted. Whenever any process arrives, a partition of size equal to the size of the process is created and then allocated to the process. So, the size of the ice partition is equal to the size of the process because whenever the process comes, what is whatever it says, that size uh, memory will be allotted for this. So, like this one, uh, this is the uh, operating system process 1, 3 MB, and process 2, 5 MB, and the process mm, three, uh, 3, 8 MB. So, this is dynamically. Uh, size of the file equal to that partition, you know, size of the process equal to size of the partition because this partition, partition is not in, declared initially. Like whereas the fixed size uh, partition uh, that is uh, in advance initially and uh, that is declared, but in this one, this is not declared well in advance. This is called continuous memory allocation or uh, in a variable uh, size partition scheme. So, the advantage of the variable uh, size partition is uh, no internal fragmentation. Uh, fragmentation of the base size memory will be uh, minimized and uh, space in the main memory is allocated to strictly according to the requirement of the process. Thus, there is a, no change of the internal fragmentation, no chance of the internal fragmentation. Uh, there will be no unused space left in the, parti in the partition. So, degree, degree of multiple, multi programming is dynamic. So, there is no internal fragmentation in this uh, partition uh, scheme due to which there is no unused space in the memory, thus uh, more process can be loaded into the memory, memory at the same time. No limitation of the size in process because the partition is allocated to the process dynamically, thus the size of the process cannot be restricted because the partition size is decided according to the process size. So, these are advantages of the variable size partition that is actual fragmentation in this diagram. Uh, so, suppose uh, in this one, this is our uh, memory. So, this is already some process are there 3 MB process and 4 MB process, 4 MB process, MB process already loaded. So, execution is taking place. Uh, this is a 10 MB like this variable uh, partition is there. Suppose, uh, in this case, some processes are um, um, terminated. So, 4 MB process terminated. So, one a hole is created. If other process comes uh, more than uh, 20 MB, then you cannot uh, allow the space for this process. That's called external computation. So, in all this, almost, almost all techniques, there is a uh, 
um, problem. There is a continuous uh, fixed partition, there is a problem, internal fragmentation, there is a variable part, um, size partition, again there is a problem. So, to avoid this one, we have got another technique that is called phasing technique. In this phasing technique in operating system, memory management is uh, responsible of the dividing the memory among the um, among the various processes. The fundamental goal of the memory management is to make optimal use of memory by minimizing internal and external fragmentation. One such algorithm for the memory management technique is called phasing. Phasing is a storage mechanism that allows OS to retrieve a process from the secondary storage into the main memory in the form of phases. In this uh, phasing, the main memory is divided into small fixed size blocks. So, as we see uh, in advance, in this phasing, the main memory is divided into small fixed size blocks of the physical memory that is called uh, frames. The size of the frame, frame should be kept the same as of the, the phase. We have to minim um, maximum utilization of the main memory and avoid external fragmentation. So, phasing is used for, um, used for fast access to data and it is a logical concept. Uh, as we have seen, uh, phasing is a technique. In this one, um, it is a, um, it will uh, control or minimize uh, the rational fragmentation and internal fragmentation. Suppose this is our uh, hard disk and this is our hard disk. In the hard disk, there is a file, 5K, 5 MB file is there, 5 MB file is there. So, whereas in the RAM, your, this, your main memory, uh, after occupation of the OS, only 1 MB, 1 MB, 1 MB, 1 MB, 1 MB, 1 MB memory is there. So, you want to uh, bring this 5 MB, 5 MB, 5 MB memory into the 1 MB space, it is not possible. In this case, we go for the phasing. In this phasing, taking what happens? So, it will uh, make the pieces of this 5 MB file into some 50 pages, 50 pages, 50 pages. So, same size, your, your, your 1 MB file uh, space is created, uh, one, uh, 1 KB, 1 KB, 1 KB, like this is also 1 KB, this is also 1 KB, and this is also 1 KB, like this, they are divided. Now, so if you divide this one, one MB, maybe um, 100 frames, this is called frames. Here, 500 frames, uh, 500 pages are there. So, uh, since the size of this uh, frame and page are both same, this is our page and this is frame. Frame size and phrase, um, page size are both same, 1 KB, 1 KB like this. So, so, the first 100 pages will be brought from the, brought from this 5, uh, 5, MB, 5 MB file to the 1 MB file. 1 MB space is there and this is our 5 MB, 5 MB uh, file is there. So, so now once it is made into pieces of uh, 1 KB, 1 KB, 100 pieces and this is uh, 500 uh, pages. So, this is called frame and this is called pages. So, now first 100 pages will be brought into the RAM. This is your RAM or main memory. So, now, now we can uh, visualize or you can see um, the 100 pages first. So this is a technique. So, after completion of this 100 pages, we will get the 101 page again, 101 page into the RAM. So, then we can visualize the 101 pages. This is a technique. So, this is a main, uh, this is only important technique for the phasing. So, your uh, pages will be made, uh, made into the, made in the hard disk and uh, frames will be made in the RAM. So, if you look at this one, uh, let there be, uh, there be a process P1 in size of 4 MB and there will, there are two holes of the size 2 MB, 2 MB. Each of the uh, each of what not uh, continuous, non continuous. So, despite having the total available space equal to 4 MB, it, uh, it is useless and it cannot be allocated to the process yes. because they are separate. There are um, different areas, spaces available. This is a uh, mm, this is called external fragmentation because we got the file 4 MB, but the uh, space is there 2 MB, 2 MB in different uh, locations, it is not continuous. So, in that case. 
you cannot uh, store the uh, uh, 4MB file. Uh, even the 4MB space available in the uh, in the RAM or a hard disk and not, not continuously, then that's called that's called fragment, external fragmentation. So this is uh, the frame has been has the same size as that of a face. A frame is basically placed where a face can be uh, placed because uh, as I explained, uh, your uh, hard disk and uh, uh, main memory, secondary memory is your hard disk. So here the this space and this space both are same. So we can um, bring a replace with this with this one. So this is the technique we are using the phasing. So each process is mainly divided into parts where the size of the each part is the same as that is space size. So pages of the process are brought into the main memory only when there is a requirement. Otherwise, they reside in the secondary memory, secondary storage. So this is a uh, phasing uh, technique. One page of uh, one page of a process is mainly stored in one of the frames of the memory. Also, the pages can be stored at different locations of each memory, but always the same main memory, main priority to find the country space. So this is your uh, mm, uh, pages, pages mean hard disk. This is your uh, mm, RAM. We are bringing the pages into frames. So like this, this is a main memory uh, collection of the frames. So we will uh, mm, replace, uh, we will transfer this page 1 to frame 1, page 2 to frame 2 like this. So we will create a uh, page table. This is a page table, page example. So let us consider the main memory of 60 KB and frame and frame size is 1 KB. Therefore, the main memory will be divided into collection of 16 frames of each 1 KB. There are four processes, four, four processes in the system that is P1, P2, P3, P4 of the 4 KB each. Each process is divided into pages of 1 KB each so that one case can be stored in the one frame. Initially, all the frames are uh, empty before, or therefore, Base of the processes will, will get stored in the continuous way. So, like this, this is a phasing uh, and phasing uh, technique. So, so conversion of the logical letters into physical letters because so actually uh, this this is our hard disk uh, in, the, in the hard disk only our uh, pages are there and this is our uh, RAM. We are we are getting the pages, pages into the frames since it is equal size and uh, um, that actually in the hard disk where actually this um, where this data is available where this um, for, for bringing the data to the uh, RAM so we have to find out uh, in the hard disk uh, where actually the physical, uh, physical data available from there only we are getting the uh, this phases to the frames so there is a conversion mechanism uh, that is uh, uh, actually, where the actual physical data is saved, that only we have to calculate. So, page number determines which phase of this process of CPU wishes to read the data from there. So, uh, in the phase also, which line, which actually where the actual data is there. So, that is important concept here. This is a, if you look at this, uh, uh, this diagram, if you look at here, This is uh, so conversion of the physiological address into physical address. We will discuss this concept in the next class. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.